So this is one hell of a book. I know you guys are going to love this one. There's a lot of themes to unpack. But before, before we jump into it, on November the 7th, I'm releasing an ebook. Yay! And it's going to condense my thoughts about education. I, there is a lot of them. But it's going to be in a very uh, mediocre humor, laid back sort of way. So don't expect any dry ass material because it's not going to be there. Everything's going to be on my socials. I'll release some snippets. And yeah, let's begin. Hey guys, so today we're doing our very first book review slash book analysis slash uh, just general discussion. Today's is about Educated by Tara Westover. And this memoir is just it's crazy and i wanted to talk about it today because it asks the question what does it mean to have an education what does it mean to truly be educated we'll we'll go into that that's a very big theme uh first of all though if you're on the youtube um youtube version of this podcast you will notice that this book is looking hella scrappy. Uh, yeah, so my friend, she gave it to me. She was lying on the beach or something, like, and it just got festy, I think, from the wind and from the sand erosion science. <laughs> and I was reading this in my bed, and every single page I would turn, <laughs> there was just sand that would fall onto my, my bed and my bed body and my face I, I read in weird positions um but you know it's don't judge a book by its cover the meat of this book though is insane tara's whole story it's quite hard to imagine what it's like to live like that she grew up in a survivalist family which literally means that her dad was preparing for society to just not happen like for the world to cease to exist and to prepare for, like, huge emergencies. And so they were literally storing, like, canning peaches to prepare so that when everything, like, the apocalypse happened or something, that they would have food for themselves and they would have a secure house and they would have just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I should mention that this whole episode will have spoilers. Though I say spoilers, but if you just wiki Tara Westover, then every, like her life, her existence is a spoiler in itself. But when I was writing my notes, the, the thing under thoughts, like overall thoughts of this book, I just wrote, damn. <laughs> damn, because yeah, it's wow. It's, um, it's wow. Wow. It's just a very emotive, very uh, vivid description of her life how she managed to go from her upbringing to get a PhD uh, through Harvard or Cambridge and Harvard. And before we go into the plot about what happens, just to, you know, set the scene, in general, her writing style is just fantastic. She um, talks about some very heavy topics like abuse uh, and and just internal conflict and she does it in such a way that it's um it evokes empathy it, it really gets us to imagine the situation sometimes her writing is a bit wordy i'm not gonna lie um a lot of description but other times like the one i'm trying to find right now she just writes in such a beautiful way so this is about her brother called tyler he's uh, very different from the family and he's one to actually seek in like schooling formal education because her family's really against it um and she writes he was waltzing while the rest of us hopped a jig he was deaf to the raucous music of our lives and we were deaf to the serene polyphony of his just very beautiful contrasting and i'm not gonna lie like the the word raucous i had to google how to pronounce it because at first i said raucous uh and and even then, like the other word polyphony, I'm not sure if it's polyphony or poly. You know what? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's go into the plot first before we go into what is education? What does it mean? So the book is split into three parts. Part one uh, is Tara's life at home. Her narrative starts when she's 10. Okay, so I take that back. Uh, she was actually six or nearly six, but it's a fragmented memory. Uh, doesn't count, I guess. <laughs> but 10, I got that from um, when she started working for her dad. 
still freaking young. And she just doesn't have an she doesn't have her own sense of identity. Identity is a major theme in this book. And um, family is Mormon, but so extreme that they make Mormonism, the religion, just so different. Like they, okay, I'm just going to pull out uh, what she wrote. Four of my parents' seven children don't have birth certificates. We have no medical records because we were born at home and have never seen a doctor or nurse. We have no school records because we've never set foot in a class. She got her birth certificate at age nine. Like, her fam- her dad was so against public school because he thought that the government, you know, was trying to brainwash you and control you. Something about the Illuminati, (laughs) I don't know. But they never saw, like, a doctor- At some points in this book, people are about to die. Like, they are on the verge of death, but they rely on the mums, like, herbalism and alternative forms of, like, medication and hospitalization. It's just, it's crazy for me to read and for a lot of the other people who read it. Um, She never had a proper education at all until she was around 16, 17. She had to do it all herself. Uh, Her dad even said at one point about education, when she was asking her dad, what's college? He said, college is extra school for people too dumb to learn the first time around. (laughs) And so obviously she's, she doesn't feel like college or a formal education is for her. There's also, she has a lot of siblings. I think she's one out of seven siblings. Uh, She also chronicles the abuse that she um, has with Her brother, especially mental and physical, again, it's just super heavy stuff. Part two. Okay, so we go from that. She has no formal education, though she studies for the ACT exam to get admitted into uni through a lot of convincing by other people. Part two is her life in Cambridge. (laughs) Like what? She goes from like no formal education to being admitted into a master's at Cambridge. So she goes to uni at BYU, studies in Cambridge. She's still unsure of herself, um, and she's got a Gates scholarship to Cambridge because she managed to wow a lot of people. Part three uh, is her doing a PhD. (laughs) Doing a PhD for Cambridge, but also doing a residency sort of visiting scholar thing at Harvard. And she does all of this. She has no formal education. She starts it at 16, I think, applies for the ACT at 16, then finishes her PhD at 27 in just such a short amount of time. And that's the plot. I, I don't think I did it justice. There's so much more to unpack. So um, I would really recommend you read it for yourself. But the most important thing I want to talk about today, what is an education? What does it mean to have an education and what does it mean to be educated yourself? Okay, so (laughs) I think we grow up with a misconception that school, formal education equals education, like they're synonymous. And she actually ends the book uh, with this this sentence. You could call this selfhood many things, transformation, metamorphosis, falsity, betrayal. I call it an education. So she's saying that her whole life is her education, and I I really agree. You see her throughout her life learning new things, and what I got was knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more power you have, and that helps you think for yourself. And I think because Tara especially, she grew up not having her own thoughts to having them or being able to develop them over time is education. It's learning about herself, learning about how to think for herself. I think that education is having the resources and having the support to think for yourself, to have your own opinion, and to feel confident uh, in yourself and in your life. And another thing is education is about knowing yourself, knowing what your values are, knowing about what you stand for. All of these things, I don't think of formal education will give you, but as Tara says, her life is her education. The experiences that she's had with different people is her education. 
and a big theme underlying this umbrella of um of education is self discovery and Tara's constant constant like journey of learning unlearning and relearning there is an alvin toffler quote about this very topic which i'll bring up we actually mentioned it in uh kelly's in, in the episode with kelly i think it was episode seven we we pulled out this quote the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn wow and tara does this exceptionally well she's always finding things that contradict her beliefs and instead of avoiding that she actually embraces it and changes her mentality which is such a hard thing to do so she grows up in this environment with her dad who says that college is you know irrelevant she literally thinks that uh education is not for her and when talking to Tyler, Tyler's trying to convince her to start uh, applying for uni. She says, college was irrelevant to me. I knew how my life would play out when I was 18 or 19. I would get married, etc., etc." So she's accepted her identities. She's, this is what she's learnt and what she's grown up thinking. And uh, there's another part where she's talking to Charles, a friend of hers, and she wants to talk about uh, trying to refute what he's trying to say, but what she realizes is that she's just regurgitating what her dad's told her about. So she she realizes in that moment, and she doesn't say it because she's like, oh no, this is my dad's words instead of my own. And so you see that in the first part, she everything's planned out for her. Everything, or at least her identity is not her own. And this starts to change. This really starts to change when she gets exposed to a world outside of her small place in Idaho. So she sees inconsistencies as well in the truth. So, for example, her mum's a herbalist. And at one point, she's trying to get Tara and her brother to help with energy work. Tara becomes sort of like a non-believer because she remembers her mum saying previously that energy work was just, you know, like a placebo. It doesn't really work. It's just your belief makes it work. And then here her mum is, you know, doing this work now. So completely contradicting what she said before. And Tara is really able to pick up on that. And just, you can see slowly that Tara is really critically thinking and she's coming to a truth for herself. Another one is Y2K when it was 1999 her dad was convinced that the world was going to end or something bad was going to happen um, at New Year's Day, so when it would hit 2000, and she believed it too. She believed it too until the time which, after 12 o'clock, she was waiting for something to happen, but nothing happened. And again, that was a shift in her in her beliefs, and again, unlearning what she what she was essentially indoctrinated by her dad. I think a pinnacle moment of when she really thinks for herself and actually chooses in the face of rejection, in the face of caring what other people think, she chose something for herself. So this is when Sean got into an accident. His, uh, I think he hit an animal and he like, okay, no, 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 wait, I said that wrong. He was on a motorcycle and then he hit an animal <laughs> and he like skidded on the road it was bad. Like his bra- she could see his brain and it was so, so bad. She she called her parents and this is they said, Oh, just bring him home and then we'll take care of him. You know, like her mum would do some herbal stuff and give him some stuff and then he would get better. And she in that moment had a choice. She could either agree, go with what she's been taught since she was young, or go with her intuition now that she knows more things. She sees this condition. She goes with her gut. So in the end, she takes Sean to the hospital. And the hospital is, as we all know, something that her family was completely against. So here she was invite she knew she was inviting conflict into the family. She knew that what she was doing was technically quote unquote wrong, but 
ultimately what she thought was right and conclude from everything that she saw around her that this was the right thing to do. And this was a moment where she truly thought for herself and and didn't have other people's thoughts um, to, to influence her. And she says this, 172, I am a traitor, a wolf among sheep. There is something different about me and that difference is not good. So she knows she has done wrong. But then she says, we both know that if I ever find Sean on the highway soaked in crimson, I will do exactly what I have just done. So she would repeat what she did just then because, again, her sense of self is now really flourishing and she would do what's right and what she believes is right. And later on in this book, she starts to do things completely, you know, like seeing a doctor. She sees a doctor. She sees the bishop to get help from him. And again, she doesn't know what brings her there, but she does it anyway. Very interesting. Her her whole beliefs are just doing a whole, like, renovation. She changes her dress sense like she for the longest time thought that you know your skirt had to be here and you couldn't show any bare skin because you were considered a whore and she would look at people around like girls around her and just be shocked at their indecency because that's how she was brought up she managed to change that she got vaccinations she did all of these things because the education going back to education was that She was exposed to a whole life at BYU, the uni that she went to, at Cambridge. These people had such different lives and she was finally learning and coming to her own conclusion about how she wanted to live. In part two and three, again, you can see a huge identity shift. So I found it really interesting. She had a huge imposter syndrome. She was identifying herself as a girl from the junkyard, as a girl who wasn't supposed to be in this prestigious Cambridge uni, that she didn't belong, she didn't understand what people were talking about, and she really thought that she was going to get found out by people. But honestly, I, I look at her education, like, she she doesn't think that she's had an education, but in the formal sense, no, she hasn't. But her education is just as valid as any other uni students, if not more. I mean, she has experienced so much that she was just as educated. And and Dr. Kerry, a very, very important mentor, said to her, first find out what you're capable of, then decide who you are. I love it. I love it. Because for her, for the longest time, she was telling herself that she didn't belong. But they were like, you're achieving some crazy shit. Like, you know, you, you get to decide who you are. And another topic that I want to talk about is curiosity. And curiosity was literally sustaining Tara's educational journey. Like, this is what set her apart from a lot of other people. And she credits her education to this. Uh, This was the context where she took random things, like random books and everything, and she couldn't really read them. Like, they were really big books about Mormonism and uh, topics that she couldn't quite understand. And this is what she says. In retrospect, I see that this was my education, the one that would matter, the one where she spends time looking through these books. And she says, the skill I was learning was a crucial one, the patience to read things I could not yet understand. So she had such a huge drive to learn that even if she didn't understand this stuff, she was willing to take the time to learn and be curious. This is a huge part of education that I don't think we are developing in students in the normal traditional schooling. Tara, she teaches herself algebra to do the ACT test to get into uni. She, okay, this is really bad. Um, She, uh, <laughs> in uni, she just says to the uh, professor at one point, like, uh, I don't understand what this is. And the whole class literally just silent, silent. And the reason why is because she pointed to the word Holocaust and said, I don't know what this is. What do you mean by that? People thought she was anti-Semitic. Uh, she honestly just didn't know. And 
over time, she was curious. She started to, you know, research what is the Holocaust. She was obsessed with it. She was obsessed with her dad's uh, later discovered bipolar. She was obsessed with uh, Mormonism and the, the culture behind it. That's what sustained her, honestly. That and her ability to learn, relearn, unlearn. And her curiosity is also very special because she doesn't judge people in the or, or she, okay honestly she does at the start but she realizes over time that she's more curious about how they live as opposed to you know outright judging someone and really looking at something from an open lens this is a really important really really important skill uh, again something that we need to we need to practice to be curious instead of judge and that will open up different avenues and she writes this book in a way that you know, we empathize with the characters. We we empathize with Sean at times, even though he's so bloody abusive. And we empathize with the dad at times. Because we know their backstory and we're more curious about that, that's why we're able to judge less. So another thing that Tara pushes in this book is to not judge so soon. Take time to really understand what you're looking at and then come to a conclusion instead of writing someone off at the start. And I want to conclude with, actually, because I've rambled so, so much, uh, the, the idea of what is the true role of school? What's the true role of formal education? And I want to link that with Tara's support network. So Tara, throughout this whole book, she wouldn't have made it, honestly, and I think Tara herself would say that she wouldn't have made it to uni, to anything, had she not had support from Tyler, her brother, her mum at times, even though her mum was, you know, on and off, uh, her roommates in uni, the bishop, definitely the bishop, um, professors, everyone. She had such a strong support network and that's what got her through. And that's what I think education is. That's what I think school is. It's not necessarily something that teaches you the hard skills about, you know, the theory because – you can do that on your own, right? You can you can search and Google on your own. But what school can do that you cannot is to provide you with a supportive environment for you to flourish, for you to understand who you really are. With the influence of others, you're able to, <clears throat> excuse me, you're able to, no, that didn't help. <laughs> I, lo- I lost my train of thought, but essentially school is here to give you different avenues to, to think for yourself. It's giving you the tools to really be able to make your own decisions and find out who you truly are. And that's what makes school special, not the fact that you can recite something or that you can theoretically understand something super well. So that's what I want to end with. And also there's an African proverb that I will honestly end with. <laughs> so it is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I will see you next week. Bye.